The Bloody Podcastacre with Zach Walters and Kennedy Catherine. here with no eyebrows after a hell of a weekend to be clear kennedy still has eyebrows they're, they're just not on drawn on yeah right. um how are you tired they normal <laughs> it's this changing of the weather it's really getting you down right i think also everyone is just going through it right now in so many different ways yes everywhere everywhere in every which way i just had a covid scare i don't have covid i was tested three times but i was so sick Ugh. For a couple of days. A couple of my other friends that, like, you also know, had just, like, such bad, like, head colds, mm-hmm. wet coughs. See, and I had a super, super dry cough, mm. so I was certain it was COVID. It wasn't, because you can still have a cough yes. that is not the one, it turns out. Not the COVID cough. The COVID. Not the CCs. No, 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 no. I mean, other than that, I'm so average. What were you looking at? I honestly was looking at your computer. Oh, okay. But I did read your shirt earlier. Her shirt says... I can't really fully read it right now. I'm not Support gonna... your local beautiful losers. Amen. And yours says Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Found this at Old Navy, and I love this shirt. It's very cute. Because I love Power Rangers. Always as, have, always will. As above, so below. As above, so below. Something in heaven. As in heaven. As is on earth. Yes. Uh, which is what we're talking about today. But yes. before we get into that, mm. Letterboxd, which is a website app where you can track your movie progress, rate movies has updated i saw a tweet today that they updated their official top 25 horror films of 2021 Mm -hmm. so they have they like update it monthly as movies come out and see place them where they see fit and it's ranked by average letterboxd member rating so like number one is obviously the highest shorts documentaries tv are excluded films must have had their festival premiere in 2021 or a national release of any country has to be tagged genre on the movie database or letterboxd so it can't be like thriller right and it has to have a minimum of 1000 view threshold so the number one is mad god never even heard of it. neither have i it currently has a 3.8 out of 5 okay but a lot of people that i personally follow on letterboxd have given it four or five out of five The tagline is a journey beyond your wildest nightmares, and you follow the assassin through a forbidding world of tortured souls, decrepit bunkers, and wretched monstrosities. That sounds amazing. And then number two is Titan, which I absolutely will not be agreeing with that. Zach loathed. (sighs) Did we get into it on the podcast? I think it was just you and I ranting about it. Yeah, I don't think we did. It It just, a lot of people, I think we did maybe, um, but we will reiterate if we. I don't think we did. No, it isn't it. It just wasn't it. The storyline is all over the place. There is no rhyme or reason for the characters, for their motives. Mm. There's a car. There's a baby. There is gender fluidity, which makes zero sense and is not a like good argument for the movie to be good. Mm. It doesn't push the movie forward in any way. Overall, just not a good time. And But people are loving it. Like, people... I do it think... It won the best film. Right. At... I... What's it called? Can? Yes, that's it. I feel like some things, we've talked about this before, that are so sort of like intellectualized, they become celebrated for sending a message that we don't really necessarily even know it's sending. People just get in their own heads and up their own asses about Mm -hmm. films of that nature. I don't know. And I also have had to, since we've started this podcast, I'm going to say something controversial yet brave. Yeah. We got um, an email once being like, so like what would, or maybe it was just a comment somewhere saying, so what would, like, your 10 out of 10 horror film be? And I was like, right, because a lot of times we're not rating things super highly. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting one day and I said, cut the bullshit. Are you even really a horror fan? I am, 100%. It's something I've always loved and always, like, above all else, horror is my favorite genre of anything. Mm -hmm. Mine too. But I just wonder if my appreciation for horror has a limitation that other people's that other people don't have. And so sometimes when it comes to movies like this, I'm like, yeah, I just don't get it. So it's not entertaining for me. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is like, I even did research after with Titan and it's supposed to be like this movie about family and relationships. And I was like, I didn't get that at all. Mm -hmm. Like there's no like redeeming, like scenes that I could think of or moments where I was like, oh yeah, sure. 
Absolutely not. Hmm. And so we're going to move on. Okay. Number three is Last Night in Soho. Oh, I'm so excited to see that one. Mm-hmm. So that's fun. A Quiet Place 2 is number four. I still haven't seen it. The Beta Test, which I made you watch that trailer by Jim Cummings. Oh, yep. Uh, that's number five. That I, one looks very confusing. It does. But I'm like, I for some reason, I didn't picture it as a horror movie. Yeah, I thought it was like a like drama like mm-hmm. or just a dark thriller. Yeah. But I'm very excited now that it's number five on this list. The Night House is number six. And then a bunch of movies that we've kind of never heard of. Man, I want to see The Night House so bad. Um, And then there's Fear Street Part 3 and 2 are 7 and 10, I respectively. I those. Neither did I. They're the second fine. one was my favorite yeah. because it was like 80s. They were just kind of cute and fun, but I didn't love yeah. them. And there's one called The Amusement Park. Kill it and leave this town is one. The medium. And like Candyman is number 16. And then the rest of them, like, sorry, a lot of them I haven't heard of, but the ones I have, like, are 18 and 22. Mm. I've been meaning to tell you that I watched The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. What'd you think? Um, It was fine. It, I wouldn't rank it in my top favorites for The Conjuring Universe. Here's what I think the huge difference was. I love the co- the first Conjuring because mm-hmm. it felt really grounded and rooted in some sense of reality. Right. The Devil Made Me Do It. They have gotten so cinematic with it by that point that there is no sense of realism. So the first scene where they're performing this exorcism. On the boy, yeah. It's like the house has its own fucking weather system. And see, that's so strange because that's my favorite scene in the whole movie. I just thought like that was the only redeeming quality was that like literally like scary aspect almost of the whole movie. The rest of it I found so dull. I just found that it's it gets to the point where, yes, it's quite dull. Mm-hmm. And then the sort of scares and entertainment that's pumped into it is just so Hollywood horror. Yeah. And I just wasn't as into it as I was with the original. But it was still, you know, it was still an entertaining watch and everything. It just wasn't my favorite. You still need to watch Werewolves Within. I do. I was actually going to watch it this past weekend. Even but... though it's horror is very interesting that they tagged it as that. but It was a movie, by the way, for the audience. It was a movie we were going to do, and mm-hmm. then Zach watched it and basically said it didn't seem like there was going to be a lot for it to it for us to do. Mm-hmm. So. It seems like Knives Out meets like a horror comedy, mm-hmm. essentially, I is like my it. like... I loved Knives Out. For recent films, I really liked it. Me too. And they're making a sequel with I a whole know. new cast, oh, which I'm is excited. very, very exciting. Anyways... As Above, So Below is the movie we were talking about today. It's also something that I say. And tweet and use in everyday life. Right. So it's always... Constantly. So it's funny. I just think it's it's so succinct. It works so well. This movie. Mm-hmm. 2014. Yeah. Which it's threw me through a loop yeah. because I was in my second year university. Oh my God. I know. And I was like... I thought this movie came out like two years ago. I had that same experience. I've seen it before. I think I've seen it more than once, actually. Mm -hmm. I went to the theater and saw it, I remember. Well, and then I was reading, um, (laughs) I was reading some notes about it. And one of the things for uh, the marketing was that they had PewDiePie. Go through the catacombs. Go through the catacombs. And I was like, if PewDiePie was doing the marketing for this movie, it had to have been no later than 2015. I also saw that they like didn't, what was my note? I want to say it specifically they did no advanced screenings for the critics oh really yeah which i thought was really interesting because i feel like that's like a huge part of like movie marketing Mm -hmm. it's like you have the critic screening and then you get the vibes of what you expect to go into the movie but i also kind of like that yeah um eternals just came out that new marvel movie yeah critics have been hating it i went and saw it and i like really enjoyed it Well, that was sort of the same thing that happened with Halloween, but oppositely. Critics were all about it, and the scores Mm -hmm. were really high, and then audiences started watching it, and were like, no, 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 Mm -hmm. we don't like this. And I feel like critics, like, for Halloween, like, for an example, it's like they go into it, and I feel like they don't know, like, the whole thing, you know? They're just watching it as, like, as a one as as is. And also, I think when something is as um, culturally beloved... You're probably a little bit more conscious of what you're saying about mm-hmm. it. Um, I do think that this movie is kind of overlooked in the horror movie, horror movie community. I found it to be, like, quite original. I don't see a lot. Like, there is, like, elements that are, like, kind of picked throughout. Like, I was like, oh, this is very, like, The Descent. But having the, like, puzzle aspect in it was also, I felt, very new. It reminded me of National Treasure. Dude, I was like, this is indiana jones for horror film fans yes a hundred percent i wrote down i was like it's one of my like kind of like favorite stories that like has like exploration and discovery mm. instead of just like people sitting around and being like spooked 
Right. You know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. This one review I have here is that it's a brutally claustrophobic movie with a dash of Indiana Jones thrown in. Oh. Thrown in. Didn't even notice that. Pretty on the nose. But yeah, it is a very claustrophobic movie. Absolutely. I There was moments where, like, re-watching it, there's the scene where... Ugh, What's their his names, face? Yeah, when he's crawling through the bones. Yeah. Absolutely not. Even when the, like, the very, very... When they first go down and the one guy gets stuck for a while yes that part i I, it just the movie more than anything was so uncomfortable for Mm -hmm. me because it's just like it's a lot of like closed spaces people being stuck kind of um in the same way that texas chainsaw was uncomfortable because what was happening was always so extended so it was like 15 minutes of a woman screaming is starting to wear on your nervous system Mm -hmm. that's kind of how this movie makes me feel yeah a hundred percent should we get into the synopsis Let's do before it. we... Let's get into it, kids. Just to let everybody know, there's so many characters in this movie. And whenever I'm writing a synopsis, I have to be wary of how many names I include because people are going to get confused. So for big fans of this movie, you might be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But we'll, we'll give greater context as we go on. So Scarlet, a young alchemy scholar, continues her dead father's work searching for the Philosopher's Stone. She travels to Paris, where she enlists the help of George, her former lover. Along with a cameraman, they translate a riddle that leads them 370 feet beneath the streets of Paris. She enlists the help of a guide, the guide's girlfriend and friend, to search the catacombs. After crawling through a narrow tunnel which collapses, they encounter female cultists who are singing and appear to be possessed. They find themselves in a blocked tunnel, reluctant to breach. The group attempts to take a different path. Somehow, they loop back around to where they were before, and they're forced to go through the tunnel. After venturing deeper into the catacombs, they encounter someone who agrees to guide them and informs them the only way out is down. They eventually find a tomb with a preserved Templar knight, a mound of treasure, and the stone. Removing the stone, Scarlet realizes too late that it's a trap, and the room collapses. They work their way out and find a drawing of a door on the ceiling, along with a Star of David, symbolizing, as above, so below, which reveals a door hidden in the floor. Going through the opening, they find a tunnel marked with the phrase, Abandon all hope ye who enter here, in Greek, identical to the entrance to hell in Dante's Inferno. Passing through, they find a dark, upside-down reflection of the room that they've just left. They realize they must continue and go deeper to escape. Along the way, the cameraman is pushed to his death down a hole by the lead female cultist, and the guide's girlfriend is killed. They encounter a burning car with a member of the group's brother sitting inside. He pulls him in, and they sink into the floor. As they continue, they see apparitions of terrifying spirits and demons. Statues in the wall come to life, and one violently attacks George, slicing his throat. After trying to drag him further, he murmurs a riddle from earlier, and Scarlet realizes the stone itself is yet another trap. Only by returning it will she find the real stone. She races back to the crypt, and after nearly being drowned in a trench of blood, she returns to the crypt and finds a polished mirror, which is when she realizes she has the magical abilities of the stone. She returns to George, kissing him to heal him. She explains they must confront their torments, as this place provides an alternate form of reality to make them realize their wrongdoings. They find and jump down a deep hole. They first believe there's no way to survive, but Scarlet insists they will live if they admit their faults. At the bottom, they see the hole is no longer there. Eventually, they find a manhole on the floor, which, when pushed, delivers them right side up onto the surface. In an ending log, an interview with Scarlet is played, in which she says she never sought treasure. She only sought the truth. Wow. As above. So below. I will start off just by saying that when I was watching this movie, I was like, this is such a Zach movie. You love found footage. Yes. You, I have noticed, and you can disagree or agree, that I think that you most often like movies with characters who are relatively your age. Yes. Ad- like adventures. Mm-hmm. Clues. Love me a clue. Trickery. E- Easter eggs for the audience. Yes. This is not really my kind of movie. So okay. I I'm, I'm, I like it fine, but mm-hmm. it's it's definitely not something I feel I have strong feelings about. Right. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say because when I was doing my research, I was sort of impressed by the amount that there is in this movie. Like a lot mm-hmm. of the people, when you're reading reviews of, of people who really love this movie, it seems to me that it's people who have like a deeper understanding of religion or mm-hmm. religious tones are fine. There's just so much in it for them to enjoy. The one thing that, like, so I've never done any, like, research about this movie. It was mm-hmm. always just very surface level. I loved 
this movie. In this, like, go-around, I kept reading about, like, Dante's Inferno Mm -hmm. and how, essentially, this movie is that to a T. But I don't really know Dante's Inferno that well other than, like, the layers of hell. Is that what they're called? Levels of hell. Levels. Why did I say layers? I mean, same thing. Going over, like, the major points in the movie that correspond with Dante's Inferno. In the beginning of the movie, there's the first tunnel, which claps with Benji, and apparently that is when they enter Limbo, which is kind of like their first layer. Why do I keep saying layer? You can say layer. I feel wrong saying layer, because I think layer of a cake. Fair enough. Dante is experiencing his first level, which is kind of like who guides him where to go in this. Benji. But also Dante. Oh, oh, okay. I see what so you're saying. Both. Sorry, I yes. got confused. So got they it. both, Benji and Dante, kind of enter limbo. It no longer applies when the ceiling collapses and traps La Toupe. Who's yeah, that? Yeah, what a That's name. the guy that they meet up with later, I think, who they're like, what are you doing here? Right. Oh, right. But then that's the one who kills Susie. Right. Yes. And I'm sorry for everybody who like doesn't know because I didn't give context in the synopsis if you haven't seen this movie. These are all just members of the group. So Benji yes. was... So let's start at the beginning. Yeah. We have... Scarlet. Scarlet, our main character, and Benji, her cameraman, who they are filming a documentary. Then they go and meet... George. George. The former lover. Kind of as like the language expert, linguistics. Also probably the most well-known actor of the bunch. Yes. I could not place him... I know Definitely who know are. who he is, yeah. Those three are guided to go meet Papillion. Papillion? Pap? I believe it's Papillon. Thank you. Anyway, oh, so then they meet him. And he's kind of like the underground catacomb. Export. Yes. And he has Susie. His girlfriend. And then there's the other guy who does the impression of, he goes, you're talking to me? Who's that guy? Robert De Niro. Yes, he does the Robert De Niro impression. And he's one of the ones who survives. Is that Zed? Yes. So those are kind of our six characters, Mm -hmm. which seems like a lot, but it's really not. Yeah, no. I mean, it doesn't feel like a lot when you're watching. It's just a lot to take an audience through who's Mm -hmm. not seen it. So back to Limbo. So in Limbo, we know it's Limbo because nobody dies because it's an area that is neither heaven or hell. Um, But their past will still partially come back to haunt them so that they can go to heaven or go to hell. Mm Mm-hmm. One thing that this person I was like while I was reading is the Philosopher's Stone isn't in Dante's Inferno. It's just kind of like a fun little like crossover touch of having alchemy be the, I don't know, the main de- or like not deterrent. Motivation. Motivation is the word. Okay. Um, be the main motivation for them to do this. Right. But then having all of the lore of the catacombs. So after the ceiling collapses, they find As Above, So Below, which they go down a floor and find the entrance to hell. The gate inscription says, abandon all hope, he who enter here. And according to Scarlet, it says that according to mythology, it places them like within Dante's Inferno because she does mention it. But they're left with no choice but to advance to go deeper as they enter hell. And this is what happened with Dante as he had to go all the way down into the devil's lair to get out of hell. And that's what Latoup, Latoup? said (laughs) um and that's eventually what happened by the end there is the reference to the flaming car which i mean in dante's inferno it wasn't a flaming car but it's one of the punishments found in the third circle of hell priests who sold holy items for selfishness were buried upside down with flames licking at their heels (laughs) and he was the only one who was really there for like the treasure so he being encapsulated by flames then having his heels licked by flames is sealing his fate in hell. Mm -hmm. The scene with the blood where Scarlet is going back to put the stone back into the original wall and realizes that she is the stone is a reference to the Inferno as well. Um, People were wrathful and stated to be in a boiling river of blood. And Dante... Dante! Dante Dante and another character, Virgil, cross... Um, and there's people who are trying to grab onto them from the boiling blood in their boat mm-hmm. and archers shoot at them from across the banks. Nice. Love to see it. There's so many more, but those are kind of like the big ones I noticed. Essentially, every time that they like crawl into a different layer, go into a different level of the catacombs, it's a new level within Dante's Inferno. Right. There is one scene also where the first time that we see the man in the hooded 
mask with like the deformed like doll face almost on the throne people have said that's supposed to be the devil because he yeah, i've is, wondered about that he is supposed to be on the seventh level a certain level but so that's supposed to be him i kind of thought it was the grim reaper that also could be a good one mm-hmm. because like their representation of the devil if that is supposed to be is very interesting but right. then they also had a bunch of minions at the end who were mm-hmm. all the same chasing them. Right. So it could be that because the Grim Reaper wouldn't have minions. Yes, unless the Grim Reaper can have whatever he wants. He could just be like a Hades type figure, just like the overlord of the underworld. And then in the end, Dante exits the Inferno and gravity flips back upside down and he comes back up on the surface. Nice. And that is exactly what happens in this movie. Yeah. So it's very interesting. There is a lot of religious aspects of this movie even though like it's not something that you need to know when no, watching it no 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 and i did the only thing that i feel is lost for people who don't have the clarity mm-hmm. but is i that, do sorry is, i was just gonna say is it does feel like there's a lot of sort of unnecessary silliness yeah if you don't have an understanding of it because you're just like what the there was a part where you know like they're interpreting riddles or something like that and mm-hmm. you're like no person this is not happening for any person. This no. feels silly. The one part that got me was when they first got into the catacombs and George is like, my brother drowned in a cave. And I said, well, that's fucking Unfortunate. convenient. Yeah. And Amara, my roommate, was like, convenient. I'm like, no, I mean, like, obviously it's super inconvenient mm-hmm. that his brother drowned in a cave. Super convenient for this storyline that this American's brother drowned in a cave. Yeah. And now we are in a cave of bones. Right. But I mean, then it had to be like the story of him forgiving himself and blah, blah, blah. Right, and then his brother shows up and it's a whole thing. I liked that they all had like their little Mm -hmm. things to go off of. Like the hanged father, Scarlet's father. Rough. Um, So we mentioned that Scarlet is continuing her father's work in the research of alchemy and the Philosopher's Stone. And in the movie, it is mentioned that, well, Benji, her cameraman, prompts her as do you think that your father's suicide was due to his mental instability? Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, (laughs) he just had a lot going on. Okay. Um, So we keep seeing this hanged man Mm -hmm. and it is terrifying because it shows up at the most random times. It really does. Because in the first time that we see it is when she is in Iraq and she is in that bullpen. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) It's not a bullpen. It's not. Um, It is the Rosetta Stone, quote unquote. Right. Is about to be exploded in the deep, deep tunnels of Iraq. Anyway, she sees her father after that, and he is hanging there. But it is terrifying. I believe that she was in Iran. You know, it's just a couple of letters difference. <laughs> specifically. Well, specifically one letter. Q. So that's all I have to say about that. See, and I wish that I had more to say about this movie, but it really just it does it does very little for me. Told myself long ago that I was not going to come on this podcast and tell lies. <laughs> i kind of want to get into like more real life stuff about the catacombs because mm, i find yes, it fascinating very very interesting i would like to visit so badly i think that i would but i'm also scared why i just feel like something's gonna happen while i'm down there like no. as in like just like collapse no i know that they've been there for years and years and years yes but i'm just like also i am claustrophobic in a sense I am too. I would definitely struggle, but I think it would be worth the uh, um, experience. I was reading like people's reviews. I went on Reddit and I was just like, I wanted to see people if they've posted about them going to the catacombs. And a lot of people are like, it is very eerie, but like probably after like 15 minutes, you just become used to it mm-hmm. because that's all it is. Right. And you're going like along a walked path that people go every day. It's right. not like you're crawling. It's not like you have to go through like tiny little holes. Mm-hmm. I think I would go. But I also still would be very terrified. I would have to be, like, taken out of that before. I want to do something like um, the tour that they do in Malignant, how there is a city below yes. the city. I find shit like that so fascinating. Right? That there's just structures still in place beneath us. You know, as above, so below. As in heaven, so as in honor. Some things that I learned about the catacombs. There is also the Rome catacombs, which I did not know. I did know that. Um, I think my parents visited. And so they originated in 2nd century BCE. Mm -hmm. Christianity was illegal at this time. (laughs) And many early Christians were martyred to close these sites and their graves remain there today. 
Mm-hmm. So it was a belief among Christians at the time that when the second coming arrived, the closer they were to the saints, the quicker that they would go to heaven. So it was very popular to be buried as close to possible to the tombs of known saints at the time. Okay. So in Rome, that was their kind of main goal with the catacombs is that they wanted to be close to where these saints were buried. They wanted to be go straight to heaven, one way ticket. Yeah. Whereas in Paris, it is known as the world's largest grave because they ran out of space to bury people. Right. Greece sort of has a similar thing mm-hmm. where it's just people buried on top of people. Yeah. Um, so all the Paris cemeteries in the 17th century started to overflow and get overcrowded. There used to be mines in Paris that stretch for miles and now which holds an estimated 6 million dead bodies through the tunnels. Holy shit. It's like really insane when you think about it. Yeah. I want to... I had a note somewhere and now I'm trying to find it. I'm pretty sure that the catacombs are about 200 miles long. Mm-hmm. Like it is extensive, extensive... Let's look it up. ...amounts of like tunnels because if it was mines, that makes sense. Well, the walking tour is about 2K... But um, they say some 200 miles of labyrinths of tunnels believed to exist. Which is insane. It's like those things where the pyramids, for example, that they keep finding new tunnels and like yeah. it's never ending. How? I wonder why it's just a small section that is open to the public. Probably so much upkeep. Yeah, probably I was going to say probably like, well, we saw those scenes in the movie where like there was water. I'm sure they're not going to clear out like overflowed areas or well and it's such a hazard at that point yeah too. they're not going to risk people's lives to make a bigger tour stop even though they it would probably be good to have a new area of the catacombs open for people to tour this movie as above so below was the first ever production that secured permission from the french government to film in the catacombs i saw that um so it utilized the set of narrow winding tunnels and complete with the like actual skeletons that were there mm-hmm. which is actually kind of like it's cool that they did that, but at the same time, I'm like, did you need to do that? Well, you, you know? don't like stuff like that because you think it's cursed. I mean, six million bodies and not one of them is going to get you. You know, that's one of a- the actors apparently was like very claustrophobic and had to take constant breaks to cope. I would. Yeah, no shit. That's the only kind of like filming fact that I know about this movie in which I wish I would know like their set build up because like I'm sure they didn't pour fake blood into the oh yeah no the I'm sure tunnels of the catacombs at least 25 percent of that movie was you know a studio production so i was like talking to you yesterday briefly mm-hmm. about how i'm in my religious media mm-hmm. phase or was that this morning it was about three hours ago yep <laughs> <laughs> time is all a blur at this time point is a construct. so recently i like have just been consuming so much religious media and like religious adjacent media okay it's like i consider this religious adjacent media because it very much is and i did a lot of research on religion i watched that the eyes of tammy faye which is oh my god straight religion i love there's like i said the only christian christian in my eyes is is tammy Tammy faye baker yeah um she was is that her name now? Right, because she was divorced. I mean, she's dead, but yeah. Yes, R.I.P. Um, Jessica Chastain in that movie, fantastic. I'm her, so excited. Everything, her makeup, her prosthetics, her her voice, her well, mannerisms. That was my fear, is I had just watched the RuPaul, the World of Wonder, um, right. Tammy Faye documentary. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize Eyes of Tammy Faye was coming out, but I had recently listened to a podcast that was probably done in promotion, like in tandem with the movie, but yeah. I, I, they didn't say that till the end. And um, I'd known about her, mm-hmm. but I didn't, wasn't super aware. And then I walked through this podcast of her life and what a fascinating person, but her voice is so mm-hmm. specific. It is. I was like, how are they going to do that? So last night I watched the trailer and I was like, just waiting for her to open her mouth. And when she did, I was not disappointed. Yeah, they do like in the credits, like they do the side by sides of actors and people and they do a clip of Jessica Chastain and Tammy Faye talking at the same time. And it is like to a T. I just got goosebumps. It's mm-hmm. like to a T, like so well done. And I want to watch one of those YouTube videos of like accent coaches walking through it. Cause I watched one of Jackie Kennedy with Natalie Portman, mm. her doing that. And like that he said it was spot on. Like there is no one else who could have done it better. Mm-hmm. So I would like to see it for that. But so Tammy Faye did all that religious media. And then I got into. I keep seeing them on TikTok and Twitter, people making 3D renderings of biblically accurate angels. So fascinating. It is so cool. Spinning wheels of eyes. And I'm just like, this would make such a great horror movie. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking like off the top of my head, characters wouldn't know what they were. 
because it is horrifying. What do you mean? Char- characters when- Characters in a movie. Is oh, oh, oh. Hypothetically, right. if this was a horror movie. These characters would not assume that they are angels. Depends. I That is something that I always knew. That they were the spinning wheels of y- yeah. skin? Yes. I see, and I did not know that. And so I've been fascinated with the hierarchy of angels recently. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why? What is this? What is this telling me? Do I become one with God? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely you are not. right. No, that is not no. a path or an era that I would no, like to start. No, but I find religion, like folklore, can be so interesting. Because it is fucking folklore. Yeah. It's so interesting to me to see what people genuinely believe in. Because it's such like a long, winding history. Mm-hmm. Do you, If you want to immerse yourself in something... Christianity. Fundamentalism is my favorite. I watch a lot of... There's this girl who does... um videos where she breaks down um, very popular fundamentalists. It's mind-blowing that people are so severely indoctrinated into something and so fiercely believe in it when, to an outside perspective and an outside person, it sounds like gibberish. It literally is crazy. Yeah. And to believe something that happened 2,000-some years ago. Or didn't happen at all. Right. Like, that's the way that the Bible is interpreted. Like, the Bible is an allegory. It's not real. It's Mm -hmm. all just metaphor. So then people interpret it in this very literal way Mm -hmm. for their own benefit. Safe and well-being, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, that's just not even what it meant. Mm -hmm. Like, and Tammy Faye was a great advocate for that. Like, she was was all for gay rights. She was one of the first people to uh, show support for a, a gay priest who had AIDS, you know. Mm-hmm. And, like, would denounce a lot of people's beliefs in the church in front yeah. of, like, in front of them as a woman in the church, for one. Right. And as, like, a wife of a pastor, because that is women should not speak up. Oh, yeah. I know. Um, I was talking about that last night, too. How, like, it's really frustrating to me, not to uh, turn this into the Tammy Faye podcast, but it's really frustrating to me that women like that, they were so smart. Mm-hmm. They had beliefs. They had things to say. And yet, you get them in front of a camera to be interviewed, or you do a piece about them, and it gets boiled down to, look at this woman who wears crazy eyeshadow. Yeah. And it's like, look at this woman who wants to create safe spaces for teenagers, because she never believed that because somebody had piercings and tattoos and listened to metal music, that they didn't deserve time and attention. Mm -hmm. Because as a Christian... She, I think she believed in what Christianity should actually stand for. And like, I'm not religious. I mm-hmm. don't believe in, all, in any of it. But I do think that Christian Christianity, I think faith in general has a place in the world. And when people say like, those of you who pick and choose your morals and values to create Christianity into whatever you want it to be in order to alienate other people, that's not what being a Christian is. Yeah. Thanks, Tammy Faye. And another thing is, like, she wanted to create it for children because as a child, she was not allowed into the church because her parents were divorced. Mm -hmm. And so she was not allowed in, even though she, like, had this calling to go learn. And she wanted to be with the people who were in her place, like, or in, like, the place she grew up. And so it was just very, like, wow. Anyway, so I'm on my religious phase. Right, me too. My religious tour. I'm always on my religious tour. So that's just been very interesting to me. Like, it's really started with the angels. My friends have been sending me because I've been telling other people. Like, ones about the Zodiac signs and... The, oh. Have you seen those My ones? girlfriend sent me one about this, uh, how, like, Jesus is actually, like, an amalgamation of the Zodiac. Yeah, and he's Pisces. Yeah. And now we're going into the age of Aquarius, right. where it's yes. technology. Yeah, it's like, there's so much things that you can, like, link Christianity to. And, like, but it's just, like, wild. So much of that I am so curious about, you know, the way we draw... Um, similarities between things Mm -hmm. what is just absolute bullshit and what isn't but then again like what in religion isn't sort of absolute bullshit i know that is a whole other podcast truly am i you guys would want us to start a whole podcast about religion religion? we could do it (laughs) i won't have a lot to speak about but i would love to just have a podcast where i could just talk about um so many things like that like religion parasocial relationships the way that people relate to strangers on the Mm -hmm. internet i love it um and you know uh right-wing conservatives Extremists, right-wing extremists. 10 wow, out of 10. that is... Add that to the list of things that you should never put in a room is lawyers, politics, and movie critics. Now we can also add all of those other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing that, like, in this whole angel thing is, like, are we sure that these people just weren't, like, cracked out? No. And seeing aliens? We are not. Hello. Hello? Hello, aliens? <laughs> that is a ball of eyes. That's an alien. If I've so, ever seen one, that is an alien. I don't know how to segue to this. So don't. Just say it. Nice. Um, I guess it's still on TikTok. I saw it a while ago, but I kind of forgot about it until I was watching the movie last night. 
there was a group of people who back in, I want to say 2019, they took their iPhones and went into the Paris catacombs and started using LiDAR technology. I remember this. Um, So LiDAR is light detection and ranging, which has the capabilities of like 3D mapping images. Mm -hmm. (laughs) God bless you. I was not about to go through my TikTok likes to find that video because it was from a while back, but I literally just Googled LiDAR and then catacombs. And so I found somebody's thread, and I'm assuming it's the person who kind of like spearheaded it. Their Twitter user is Emmanuel underscore 2M, and he tweeted... So last weekend, I don't remember when this was from, he said, last weekend I went down to the catacombs of Paris. If you're not familiar, it's an insane ant hill-like network of 200 miles of galleries, chambers, century old, 60 feet beneath the surface. The goal was to 3D scan as many places as possible using the new iPhone 12 Pro with the two powerful LED lights that we brought. So we spent 12 under... We spent 12 hours underground walking or crawling more than 20 miles, scanning 30 different places using Scanniverse, Polycam AI, and Sightscape. I kind of, like, was going through them all. I'm going to put them on the TV because it's so cool. There's just, like, so many, like, little pieces that they did. You don't realize how big it is or, like, how it, like, goes down. Yeah. Because, like, when I picture the catacombs in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's just one level. Anyways, so this is the Sale Z portion. So, like, this is just... So, what we're looking at right now is just, like, a 3D map of one of the Paris catacombs just through an iPhone. I'm trying... It's really hard to get, like, a idea of what the dimensions would be like, but this looks quite sprawling. Like, you would have a lot of room to walk around in this area, right? Yes. Okay. Like, because it looks pretty, like, the archways, like, over here look pretty right. tall. Yeah. And there's a lot of graffiti now. Like, this is, there's 2013. It's so fucking unfortunate. I hate that. Um, this one is one of my favorites. The spiral entrance into the catacombs. Oh, wow. And is this the original entrance? I don't know if this is the original entrance, but it's, like, one of the entrances. That's very cool. This would have taken so long. But yeah. also the thing that's like really crazy about this LiDAR like technology is if you have your phone or your iPad, you just walk around and move and it'll constantly build like everything in front of you. So it's not like you have to take one single picture and then like match it up. You literally just like are taking a video and you just like build as you right. go. And then the new, this is kind of off topic off topic but like the new um update to iphones allows you to say like i do a lot of whiteboard concepting at work so like writing on a whiteboard Mm -hmm. while we're working through brainstorming sessions and now i can just take a picture of it and it it um converts it into a pdf that's insane right um this is another piece called the crossroads of death oh that's terrifying how did they do these things it's so fascinating to me and like how did people not get lost oh i'm sure they did you could spend hours going through all of this. Mm-hmm. But, like, also, like, it's so cool that, like, technology that we can, like, preserve these kinds of things in, like, a 3D way without having to, like, destroy what's already there. Like, you mean as in, like, pick it apart to rebuild yeah. sort of thing. Got it. Yeah, this is very cool. And I would really like, I don't know if these people, um, like, Emmanuel and his team ever did a thing where you've pieced together all of it as one big map. Because that would be really interesting to see as well. Right. It, it's literally a whole other world down there. Uh, let's go. Sure. <laughs> Quick trip to Par- Paris. Paris. I'm sure it's not expensive at all. This is not going to be interesting for people to listen to us no. looking at, but I encourage you guys to go look at it. Yeah, We'll post the link when this podcast comes out, if I remember. So anyways, that's kind of my like fun thing that I was really going through yesterday and spending some time just like kind of creeping around. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's all I kind of have to say about this movie. I wish I had more to contribute, but I'm so glad I just got to sit here and have you talk to me Listening today. to me talk. It was beautiful. Do you want to rate it? What if I said no? No, you're like, actually, actually I'm Actually, I don't leave want it. to rate it. I think that today, reading is not fundamental. <laughs> um, Scary. Yeah, there's some good jump scares. There's some good, like, bloody moments. Like, I would say, like, a four or five. Like, it's middle of the road. God, the yawns all of a sudden. I had yeah. only two coffees today. I had none. That's my problem. Mm. I would give it, a, yeah, about a four. Unsettling? Mm, maybe when I first watched it. Not this go around. But maybe like a two. 
See, I was going to say, like, a six. Well, I mean, we can have different opinions. Yeah, I just feel like the, like, claustrophobic, like, mm. tight spaces. Yeah. You know what? I will say, you know, in the moment, very unsettling. Like, yeah. makes me uncomfortable. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like, maybe, like, a six. Yeah, I think it's more unsettling than scary. Yes, I would agree with that. Story. Um, it's very detailed. I enjoy it. Like I said, there is a little bit of like a silly, a ridiculousness, a silliness to the sheer amount Mm -hmm. that they've put into it, but it's a good story. It's well fleshed out. Yeah. I feel like everything kind of has its place Mm -hmm. in it. It's not like we have moments that like you see and you're like, this isn't going to like come to fruition later, but it does. Right. Like I would give it like a five because it's not knock it out of the park. Like mind-blowing by Mm -hmm. any means but it's a good story like it keeps you entertained yeah oh yeah five is it a paper cut or is it a bloody massacre it is one bloody river yeah i was like i was gonna say bloody hole it's one too many like random like pothole tunnels right they jump through so many like holes i don't even think i would know what end was up anymore i mean they didn't speaking of end is up do you think that they Sorry, now I'm like, let's actually get into this. But I just remembered. In the end of the movie, when they come back up to the surface, do you think that, that it's, it is their normal world that they know? I do. Okay. I just, I don't know. It's just something that I was like thinking about where I'm like... I saw somebody say that the street looked a little too bare at that specific location at that time of night would never look like that. And they were wondering if that was like an indicator that the, they were not in their... Normal place. Their actual world. But I think that, no, they successfully worked their way through the layers and the they made their way back. Yeah. Because they did. You're right. They did have to like confess their sins in mm-hmm. order to get out. So they did. Yeah. Just wanted to double check and check on in. Yep. That's it. That's all. Um. Yeah. So you guys know where to find us. We are on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcastker. You can send us an email at thebloodypodcastker at gmail.com. That's it. That's all. Until next time. The only way out is down.